In this video, we'll be beginning the new section on quantitative analysis, and this will be the first part on titration. So within this part, there'll be two sections. Uh, the first part is going to be acid-base indicators, which we'll be talking about today. And the next video will be on titrations, so talking about standard titrants and also performing titration. Here are our silver stop points. And so what are indicators? Well, many of you would have learned about indicators in stage 5, and uh, basically what you would have d understood them to be are these chemicals that when added to a liquid will tell you the range of the pH. So indicators are chemicals that provide qualitative information on a solution's pH, and they do this by changing color, which is why we have a, a color chart on the, on the right-hand side over here. Another thing is that they're always weak acids. They're weak, normally made of uh, weak acids, and they appear one color when deprotonated, another one uh, protonated, which is why they're effective at telling us the pH. So methyl orange is red uh, at an acidic pH and yellow. So we have this chart, uh, the scale on the bottom it goes from 0 to 14. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So basically what this means is if we look over here, the range is around uh, 4 to around uh, 5 point three-ish, so that would be the range in which methyl orange changes from red to yellow. Okay, below that it will be red, above that it will be yellow. Similar for meth, uh, methyl red, so methyl orange and methyl red, and then bromethylamyl blue, litmus, phenolphthalein, and indigo carmine. Here are some common indicators that we'll uh, see in the classroom. So phenolphthalein, bromethylamyl blue, phenol red, and methyl orange, okay? So phenolphthalein and acidic pHs, so pHs below 7, it will be colorless, and basic colors, it will be pink. But if we look here, the pH range is from 8.3 to 10, so actually it will be colorless until 8.3. Similarly, if we look at bromethylmol blue, the acidic color is yellow and the basic color is blue. It has a pH color change of 6 to 7.6. So this means below 6, it will be completely yellow, and above 7.6, it will be completely blue. Phenol red will be yellow when it's acidic, so below 6.8, and basic when it's uh, red when it's basic and above 8.0. And methyl orange will be red below 3.2, and yellow above 4.4. So indicators of weak acids, which we denote with the notation HIN. They exist in equilibrium with their conjugate base, which is IN minus, and we can demonstrate this by giving our equation HIN plus H2O is in equilibrium with IN minus, so the conjugate base indicator, and H3O plus. We should notice that different colors are in their weak, are seen in the weak acid and conjugate base forms, which is exactly why we have this color change with the change of pH. Now, if we see a shift of the equilibrium position, we should recognize this from the uh, module from module five due to Le Chatelier's principle. So, a shifting in equilibrium is going to demonstrate large macroscopic changes, and we would have seen this with the equilibrium between nitrogen dioxide and dinitrogen tetroxide. And so, at low pH, we should have an increase of H3O, which is why the pH is decreasing. So, the more hydronium ions there are, the lower the pH. And so if we look over here, the equilibrium is going to shift left because we're increasing the right-hand side concentration. Similarly, if we are decreasing the right-hand side concentration due to Lechatelier's principle, the equilibrium is going to shift to the right, so we will increase the amount of conjugate base. If we look at phenolphthalein, the weak acid form is colorless, and the conjugate base form is pink. So here we have the IN minus conjugate base, highlighted as pink. At low pH, we increase the H3O plus concentration, so the equilibrium is shifting left, and that's why at acidic pHs, we have a colorless solution. Similarly, if we decrease the H3O, solution, uh, the H3O concentration, we're shifting it to the right, and that's why we should see it turning pink. And the pH range is going to be 8.3 to 10, and this is determined as a result of the equilibrium position. So the range of the indicator's color change depends on its strength, or the pKa. The pKa is a relationship that's given by the negative log of the 
equilibrium of the acid dissociation constant Ka, and it's going to be equal to the pH when the weak acid is 50% ionized, as the HIN or the weak acid indicator concentration is going to be equal to the conjugate base concentration, which is what we see here. Now, a stronger acid indicator is going to have a greater tendency to donate protons and change color at low pH, whereas a weaker acid indicator is going to have a lower tendency to donate protons, so they change color at high pH. So, Fennel's daily note here has a pKa of 9.8, and that means that the equivalence point, or the point at which the concentration of the weaker acid and the conjugate base, is going to occur when pH is 9.4. That's why the color range is between 8.3 and 10, because it changes color within these ranges. Now, fennel dalen has a pKa of 9.4, and so when the pH equals 9.4, that is when the concentration of the weak acid fennel dalen and its conjugate base are equal. This is why we see the color change range between 8.3 and 10. Methyl orange, as I said previously, is a stronger weak acid, and that is why the pKa is going to be low, so the color change also becomes at a low pH. Now to determine the precise range of a pH of a solution, we should use multiple indicators. Two or more indicators might end up providing redundant information, but it's good to use them nevertheless. Let's look at an example here. We use multiple indicators, for one solution, and we get the following results. Phenolphthalein shows colorless, which means the pH must be below 8.3. Bromothermal blue shows green, which is a mix of yellow and blue, so we know that it lies somewhere between this range. Phenolphthalein turns orange, so again, we also know it's between this range. But because it's between the range of 6.0 and 7.6, it must be below 7.6, but it must be above 6.8. Methyl orange is the one that provides us with redundant information as we know the range of 6.8 is higher than any of these pH ranges.